Joining me now is Massachusetts Democratic Congressman Seth Moulton, former Marine Corps officer who served in Iraq and a member of the House Armed Services Committee. Congressman, so good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Well, this is certainly underscoring how difficult things are for Ukraine right now, because today a Russian missile tore into a small village in the eastern Kharkiv region where people were gathering for a memorial service, and it killed more than 50 people, including a six-year-old child. Officials in Kyiv are calling this one of the war's deadliest attacks on civilians. President Zelensky condemned the attack, which struck a grocery store. What's your reaction to this, and I mean, especially it's just, in the I mean, context of our stalemate? We can't agree on the money. No, that's absolutely right. It, it, look, this is, this is incredibly concerning. And, and I think about it not just in terms of this criminal war in, in Ukraine that's consuming more innocent lives every day it goes on. I also think about it in terms of deterring war in the Pacific with China. And China sees two major victories coming out of this dysfunction in the House of Representatives. The first is the refusal to uh, send aid to Ukraine, uh, because we all know that China's watching the West's reaction to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, because that tells China a lot about how we might react to their invasion of Taiwan. They're, they're watching carefully every step of the way, whether we stand with our democratic allies or we let Ukraine fend for itself. But the other thing is that they're just capitalizing off the propaganda victory right now, both Russian and Chinese news outlets saying that America is in crisis, our politics is dysfunctional. And the sad reality is that that's what you see right now in the Republican side of the House. But, so right now the House is in a standstill until a speaker is elected. Uh, nothing is getting done. How concerning is it to you and you know, to our allies? I mean, I think it is very concerning. I mean, it's very clear that, uh, that, that Speaker McCarthy was not willing to put Ukraine in the, the budget package that averted a shutdown that, by the way, he only got through because Democrats bailed him out. Let's not forget that 90 Republicans still voted last weekend to shut down the government. But after getting that through, after saving us from a crisis, now the Republicans are having a civil war, a civil war where the likely victors, the two people who announced they might run for speaker, Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise, have been opposed to Ukraine aid. In fact, both of them voted to decertify the election. I mean, these are not, uh, these are not stalwart supporters of democracy, whether at, in Ukraine or even here at home. And one of them might be the next speaker of the House coming out of the Republican conference. So there's legitimate reason to be concerned. What we need to show the world, starting with the House of Representatives today, is that America is united. United. That partisanship may, you know, entail some bitter fights uh, in politics back home, but it's not going to support, it's not going to deter our support for our core principles, freedom, democracy, exactly the values that Ukraine is fighting for every single day. And we're about to get a feed from the Oval Office where the president is meeting with his national security team on Ukraine, getting a briefing, uh, including the new uh, the new chairman of the Joint Chiefs, C.Q. Brown. But let me ask you also, how you feel about the Republicans blaming the Democrats for the speaker mess? I mean, that's just com completely absurd. It's Democrats who continue to bail the Republicans out. Uh, Democrats bailed them out of the shutdown. Uh, I mean, the Republicans would be even more in, in greater chaos if they didn't have a speaker and also had shut down the government. And that's what would have happened if we Democrats hadn't stood together to do the right thing for the country, to stand with Kevin McCarthy and reasonable Republicans to avert a shutdown, even when 90 conservative Republicans voted to shut the government down. So there's no question this is a Republican civil war. It's consuming the House of Representatives. We need to make sure it doesn't consume the entire country.